Hello, and thank you for joining this Onc Live Pure Exchange Title 2017 update on metastatic squamous non-small cell lung cancer. Advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is a particularly challenging disease to treat and is further complicated by factors such as patient smoking history, comorbid disease, and age. Recently, our research efforts have yielded important advances, adding a significant number of therapeutic options for patients now being treated through multiple lines of therapy. In this Onc Live Peer Exchange, I am joined by a panel of experts in lung cancer medical oncology. Together, we will highlight the most important studies, including those from the 2016 World Conference on Lung Cancer, and provide insight on how to interpret the new data. I am Dr. Mark Sosinski, and I am Executive Medical Director at the Florida Hospital Cancer Institute in Orlando, Florida. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Tracy Evans, Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, Dr. David Jackman, Assistant Professor at the Harvard Medical School, Medical Director of Clinical Pathways at Dana-Farber, and Senior Physician at the Lowe Center for Thoracic Oncology in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Edward Kim, Chair of Solid Tumor Oncology and Investigational Therapeutics, and the Donald S. Kim Distinguished Chair for Cancer Research at the Levine Cancer Institute in Carolina's Healthcare System in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Jared Weiss, Section Chief of Thoracic and Head and Neck Oncology at UNC Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Colleagues, thank you for joining us today. Let's now begin. And I'm going to start with you. Um, certainly the past decade or so in the entity we're not talking about today, non-squamous, particularly adenocarcinoma, has brought with it a number of uh, different testing issues and strategies and stuff like this. But it's a, a bit different in squamous. There are uh, a number of issues with establishing the initial diagnosis. How confident are you that it's squamous? Uh, there still is room in selected patients for testing. I'd like to get your thoughts in terms of how you think about that. Yeah, we, um, we, we go through a process in our institute where we try to discuss uh, any changes to our clinical pathways. And we do that uh, in monthly meetings so that we can get alignment across our system. Uh, even uh, with the group I worked with before at MD Anderson, there were 20 medical oncologists who did thoracic oncology. And I don't, I mean, we never audited charts, but I would find it hard to believe that all 20 did the exact same thing in clinic. And so this is the struggle we try to uh, uh, achieve as in a department, in a system, and let alone now across the country, uh, and, and I'm not even going to go overseas on this. Uh, we like easy things. You know, you get a breast cancer specimen, reflexively, the pathologist knows to do HER2, ER, PR, and, and that's easy. Uh, in head and neck, it's becoming HPV, but in lung cancer, you know, we've got the non-small cell versus small cell, and non-small cell then had to get divided up into non-squamous versus squamous, and even within non-squamous, there are certain histologies that you may not want to do testing for. Uh, what we've seen is really great. Uh, I, I love the fact that we have EGFR mutations that we test, and we test those in, in our adenocarcinoma subsets. Uh, we will also look at less smoking histories in squamous. Now, that's very hard sometimes for a pathologist to discern that because it's not necessarily in the requisition. So we really have to rely on our physicians to specifically ask for that. And we won't reflexively do that because it's tough when you have tissue sent to path coming from pulmonary or other areas. Uh, we like to do ALK, ROS1, and EGFR mutations as standard biomarker testing, part of that diagnostic workup in patients with non-squamous and specifically adenocarcinomas, regardless of smoking status. In the exception with squamous, we will run, uh, in those patients who have either light or never smoking histories, we will run those tests as well. Uh, PDL1 has kind of brought that together. And I know we'll discuss some of this uh, uh, later, but now it allows you to talk to every non-small cell lung cancer patient and say, we want to test biomarkers for you, and this may be an important one to also test. So this is how we've put it together. There are also local labs that do these tests. There are then larger commercial labs that run these tests in a wide variety of numbers of genes, anywhere from 50 genes to 600 plus genes. Uh, we do like to run large panels, but again, 
it, it's not as easy because these are not necessarily all FDA approved tests and so reimbursements can be different and that's one of the challenges that we have with wanting to run upfront larger genomic testing. So our standard of practice is just to run the ones we need for diagnosis, meaning the EGFR mutation, ALK translocation, ROS1, in selected squamous patients. But definitely the PDL one in all of our patients who have squamous histology. You know, I'm commonly asked by community oncologists about this issue of mixed histologies. You know, you get a rather limited biopsy and the pathologist may wax and wane about some adeno and some squamous uh, features and stuff like this. What, what's your perspective on the mixed histology and where that fits in? Yeah, I, I hate seeing those two. I hate, <laughs> I hate, I hate seeing mixed histology yeah. and I yeah. hate seeing uh, very small amounts of tissue or cells. Yeah. Those are the two most frustrating parts. I mean, the only thing more frustrating is when you do a procedure and nothing is there. There's no specimen. So now you don't even have a diagnosis. Uh, you know, we tend to err on the side of over-testing. That's where I would like to do it. And so we usually, if, there's, if it's one of those mixed, we will try to get the whole panel. Um, but uh, if it is more predominant in the squamous histology and it looks like a squamous on scans and there's a large smoking history, and there's limited tissue, then we will prioritize those markers in, in a manner more PDL1-ish. Uh, but a lot of that needs the clinical input right. that a pathologist can. Is is um, with regard to this? You know, how many things do you test for? Is there? Uh, you know, I've heard some people provide the rationale that um, you know EGFR mutations do occur in squamous at a much lower frequency, but maybe not any lower than say ROS1 in adeno. So why not look, you know, regardless of histology? And then the issue of, you know, how much do you look for? Do you, how far do you cast that net? Are you going to find some of the other very uncommon um, alterations in which there may have been only a case report with some, something? Is, is that, uh, how, how do you frame that in your? Yeah, uh, uh, it, it's challenging. That's a really great point because you always have that case report, and someone yeah. on faculty will always bring up the one esoteric they, case they report. Do. That's right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so what we try to do is make sure that you can be as less variable as possible. Okay. And so uh, over-testing is not a good thing. Um, then again, you might find that one here or there. Uh, that's why we try to build in these practices where we have certain things that we think are in line with what practicing medicine in 2017 is because, you know, the same argument sort of goes down a slippery slope. Well, I want to test for KRAS and everybody, and I want to start for testing for BRAF because yeah. we might be able to get an off-label drug for that. And, and so that's where we try to draw a line on what is an FDA approved or not. Right. Uh, and, and whether there's an actual therapy that could help that patient. Right. And I so completely agree, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the general gist of the way we go, but I agree, it's very challenging. You want to do as much as you can for a patient, but that's also why we don't do a 650 gene upfront on everybody.